Welcome back to another Getting to Know an AFL Drafty, and we're joined by Usain Bolt-esque speedster and Socrates IQ type forward, Ollie Hotson. How are you doing, my friend? Good, mate. Thanks for having me. Well, I mean, obviously, your familiar face, um, a lot of our fan base are Carlton and Collingwood, and you are the son of Trent, who represented both our great clubs. Um, yeah. How are you uh, going in, building into the draft? How are the nerves? Has, has Dad helped you out with that? Oh, it's more excitement, I think, than nerves. Um, I think maybe the night before, you would be pretty nervous. Getting to sleep might be a bit difficult, but... um. Yeah, I don't know, you know, we're just chilling out, you know, watching a lot of basketball and kind of taking it easy, not thinking about it too much at the moment. So, um, no, nah, it's pretty good. I'm just pretty keen for it to come around. Well, I mean, you, you've had a really good year and obviously you, being in the Victorian area, you suffered heavily from COVID like we all did here in Victoria. How did that affect your formative years? A lot of draftees talk 16 and 17 underages. That's where they do their most development. How did you work around that and how did that affect you? Um, you know, it was actually pretty tough because, um, you know, a lot of us Dragons boys did two or three consecutive pre-seasons without actually, without actually having a season. So it was a bit of a weird one. But um, I guess me and a lot of my mates kind of all got together in that sort of lockdown time. And every almost every day we'd all meet up, like 10, 12 of us, pretending to be family or related, um, you know, down at the Oval and just having a kick. So um, I guess that self-motivation was pretty important. But luckily, I know I had a good group of mates around me that are all pretty motivated and um i was lucky that way so i think i didn't have it as bad as others so i was still out there kicking most days which is good mate that's i mean you, you when you've got problems like that you've got to get imaginative and obviously you can see with your form it hasn't really affected your development a great deal as a lot of people thought it was in the media yeah no it was, it was pretty good <laughs> So what does the off-season look like for you? You've obviously had the state championships and then you've got the combine right in between your off-season. What does it look like for you, Ollie? Oh, well, I think I, no one really had a break before that combine. We're all, obviously, we're pretty knackered and sore after a big, long season and a couple of grand finals and, you know, long final series. So I had, I reckon, a week off just to sort of get some rest and recover a little bit. And then I got back out running again because obviously we had the 2K time trial coming up. So, um, yeah, just held on for another couple of weeks. And then after that combine, I didn't move for about three weeks, I reckon. I sat on the couch and, um, yeah, soaked it up the bit of a rest. So, um, but then I had to, you know, sort of get back into it uh, this week and last week, um, you know, pre preparation for first day of training. So it was a good, well, you know, I guess well-deserved rest. So, yeah. Well, it's been a long season for Sandy and uh playing in the state league as well for you for metro you've uh you, you've gone deep in both events haven't you yeah yeah so with uh the year how would you describe your year how have you seen your year it's been a highlight reel but from your perspective what stood out for you and anything you wish you'd done more of um i think my year's been a pretty you know steady incline um i guess from the start of a plateau you know not very not very high i guess it was a pretty average start for the year so um i guess i could only get better from the start which is you know i guess a good way to look at it um but yeah i'm happy i'm happy with the year as a whole i guess with how it turned out um you know i can't really complain with the season i had um but i do wish if i could you know change something i probably would I, a lot of it was out of my control but um get it's, it's fitter fitter at like the start of the year so do more running pre-season um come into the year you know really ready to go so i could grab the attention of the recruiters from day one instead of, you know, four or five weeks in, um, which probably would help with a, you know, a more consistent year. And, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with the year anyway. So, um, yeah. Mate, you've been talked about at the right time, really. Yeah. You've, uh, you hit form just at that right part. Now we, we, I'm a big argument about media. I hate comparison. We talked about you a lot on this show and on blue abroad. How would you actually describe your game though, for those watching at home? Um, I think oh, my game probably the strengths are more of that power sort of um, burst sort of player. So I think uh, probably describe it like damaging sort of attacking player. Um, you know, I, in my impact per possession is pretty high. So I'm not really the accumulator, but every time I get it, I tend to do something all right with it. So I think sort of an impact player, I'd describe it. Mate, it's, I, I think you're a very exciting player as well. You've got very high, like we said in the intro, you've got very high IQ as well. 
Yeah, which I think is something that you can't teach personally. So very exciting to watch. Yeah, um, thank you. What's the feedback been like from the AFL clubs? How is that? I'd imagine that's so nerve-wracking. Yeah. You're kind of like selling yourself to 18 random people, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. I think it's you get used to it as you go. Obviously, at the start, it's a bit weird. A um, bit of a you know sort of surreal experience. There's a lot of in those rooms, a lot of coaches and people that you you know you've seen on TV a lot. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. But I think sort of it's it's as you get used to it, it's more you look at it as just a chat. Like they're they're all really good blokes, and um, all they are just want to have a chat and get to know you. So. It's not too nerve-wracking once you actually understand that. Um, but, yeah, it's more just, you know, the feedback through during the year was more just to telling me to play to my strengths and really take the game on a bit, um, which I wasn't doing at the start. And then as the game, as the year went on, I probably started doing a bit more. Um, yeah, so there was more – they were just backing me into – they knew the, the strengths were there and the potential was there, but they wanted me to take it on and um, show the potential that they knew I had. Man, that's awesome. I mean, it's good as well to get real-time feedback from these guys as well with what they're looking for. It's – you, you hear a lot with the NBA. The NBA recruiters are almost silent and then yeah. just tell them the week before and go, we're yeah. picking you. So that's really cool to hear. Um, with your uh, what, with where you're about to be picked projected-wise, there's a lot of interstate clubs. So how do you feel at this time in your life, maybe going interstate to New South Wales and players like that? Is that something <laughs> that really appeals to you, excites you? Um, no, I definitely think it does. I think there's... So I look at it as like there's pros and cons to both. Obviously, saying Victoria, you know, you're close to home and um, you don't have to move out. Well, you might have to move out, but it's, you know, with all your mates, all your family. So I think that's pretty good. But then I think also going to state is just almost just as good because you get to sort of move out and start, you know, new, fresh life and a bit of independence. So I'll be happy, you know, wherever I go, um, as long as I'm on an AFL list and um, wherever that is, what state, I'm not really too fast, to be honest. Mate, that's cool. I mean, that's really cool. And like when we speak to AFL players, they talk quite a lot about VFL and State League versus AFL and the dramatic pace and the change of the game. Yeah. Obviously, you've played national championships and you've played for Sandy Dragons. Is there a big change for you personally as a player in playing club football and playing national championships? Is there a noticeable difference? Um, no. Oh. I think there is. It's. It's. I think that there's a bigger contrast between APS, so school footy, and NAB league, and like sort of state footy. I think the NAB league and state stuff's a lot quicker and um, yeah, more fast paced. So I think, but I think most of the state games are made up of NAB league sort of players, and I think it's it's similar, but the, you can tell the standard is higher. So the pace is the pace is a little bit faster. Targets get hit a little bit more. Um, you have to be a little bit more on your toes. There's not really much room for ever error. So I think that's the difference. Just the yeah, the pace and the skill level is a bit higher. And how does your preparation, how has that evolved? Like, say, from under 16s to now, is is there anything that you've changed or added? Is the things you certainly like to do for the bigger games? Does anything change that way? Uh, well, yeah, definitely. That professionalism side is something I have to work on a little bit. Um, I kind of used to just, you know, roll out of bed and get to the game and just play. So, um, yeah, that had to improve a little bit as the year went on. So, I think... That's still something I'm working on, uh, but you know I don't really do anything you know superstitious. I don't have any pregame sort of rituals. I, I just have a good, make sure I have a good stretch, um, good food in the morning, and then um, I like to start my warm up pretty early because once I get my first wind out of the way, I feel a lot better. So I think I like to work pretty hard in the in the warm up so that I'm ready to go for the game, which is something I've actually learned during the year. So um, yeah, I started going harder in the warm ups, and then I think that helps me in the game, mate. It's, mate, I mean, obviously it's a, a learning experience, isn't it? Because I'd imagine that if we ask you this question in 10 years, you've probably got a thousand things yeah. you're doing that you're not yeah. doing now. Um, now, obviously you've played for some of the best sides as a junior. You've played for Metro, so you've seen some superstars. And Sandy Dragons, you've been fortunate to play with some other superstars of the NAB League. Is there anyone that stands out that probably your surprise isn't talked about more? Well, that's a good question. I think there's there's definitely some people around um, the Dragons that, you know, that uh, don't get that sort of media attention or anything like that that a lot of people wouldn't know of. But I think in terms of Big Metro, I think Blake Jury is one. I think um, his, you know, his professionalism and, you know, his determination to perform week in, week out and do everything right with his body is, you know, next level. I think it's already at that AFL standard. So I'm a bit 
surprised he's not as highly talked about. I think he should still hopefully get picked up almost definitely. But um, yeah, I think I rate him pretty highly and he's already got that mentality of an AFL player. So I think he'll slot right in wherever he goes. Mate, that, that, that's cool. We have actually discussed um, yourself and Blake when we were doing a little guys that were in the top 10, which is really cool to hear because like, I, yeah. I agree with you. Just from the eye, he has stood out as well like yourself in yeah. how he goes about it and his steady incline throughout the year as well. Yeah. Now, we've five minutes to go. This is a put you on the spot. There's five minutes to go. You're in the AFL. It's an elimination final. We're two <clears> goals <throat> down. What are the fans and what's your mindset going into that? What are you doing to get us over the line? Oh, if we're two goals down, it's everything's a green light. So just go every single time you get the ball. Um, I think that's more don't worry about mistakes and just give throw everything at them. Um, whenever you get it, run forward, take on tackles, do whatever you can. Um, get on your boot, just everything you're doing, go forward. So I don't think you'd think anything about going backwards or sideways. Just straight forward the whole time. And if you turn it over, you turn it over. So I think at that point, the game is the thing we want or lost. So if you turn it over, you might lose it. But... Um, yeah, you go. I think you've just got to go forward at all costs. You're kicking the two goals as well, aren't you, Ollie? Oh, hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> now, for those watching at home, um, if they were going to do some research on you, what game stands out for you where you play your best of your abilities? Um, I think probably the game or either the game against South Australia for Vic Metro. Or actually, no, I think the, the NAB League Grand Final was probably my one that showcased my abilities my best. I think I didn't have like, you know, the most amazing stats, but I think every time I, I did a lot of um, taking the game on, a few fend-offs, um, you know, taking on some tackles and running around a bit. Still had a decent day, but um, I think that that game sort of showcased my strengths the, the best, I think. <laughs> May, I mean, that was uh, you, you got the goal as well, there as well, didn't you? You, you? you snagged and you had 25. And that that game you first talked about as well, the I think a lot of people have talked about that one, the South Australian game. You were yeah. you found a lot of the ball when you were very damaging, weren't you, in the forward half as well? Yeah, I think that's sort of that that first game that sort of put me out there the, the most. I think that one sort of propelled me into sort of those top 20 discussions and all that. So I think, yeah, a lot of people would say that one as well. Who's who would you say has been the biggest influence on you? Family member, teammate, coach? Who's really influenced you, particularly this year? Um, I think in terms of coaches, so Wayne Cripps of the Dragons, um, he's been he's been massive. So he's obviously the head coach of Dragons, but then he was also the midfield coach for Vic Metro. So I spent heaps of time with him, um, you know, doing going over vision consistently, and he he was really in my corner, just telling me, you know, he was before before the recruiters, before anyone else, just telling me. He's seen me at training. Like, just take the game on. He knows like what I can do, and he knows that I'll I'll be able to take the game on. So, he was really driving that. And I think also Matthew Lloyd at Halebury, um, you know, being an all-time great in the AFL, um, his insight is pretty valuable. So, um, I've been pretty lucky with that, along with my dad, who's also you know an AFL, has AFL experience. So, um, I've been surrounded by very good support. So, I'm very lucky in that regard. Mate, I um, and it shows as well. I mean, yeah. You, you'll be soon adding to that list as well of experience uh, in the family, particularly in the next uh, eight days. Now, obviously, you've probably got split loyalties, but is there a certain team you follow in the AFL? Is there a team that you'd call yourself a fan? Obviously, you're going to disregard that in seven days' time. Yeah. No, nah, so I'm a Collingwood fan, but Carlton are right behind. So, obviously, Dad played for both. And my dad and um, my middle brother, he got they both go for Carlton. But... Um, for some reason I'm on the other side of the fence, so I'm with Collingwood. But so yeah, so we're, there's a bit of a rivalry in the house. So when they play each other, you know, it's a bit of a mixed emotion sort of thing. Um, but like around the when they're not playing each other, I go for Carlton, whoever else they're playing for. But yeah, when they play each other, I side with Collingwood. Tell you what, round twenty three in your house must have been a, a joy to behold. I couldn't actually, I couldn't decide like who I really wanted to win because I didn't want to see Carlton, you know, out of the eight, but I wanted to see Collingwood top four. So. It was a weird, weird feeling. <laughs> and is there a particular player that you uh, really enjoy watching? That your your YouTube highlight, you you really enjoy watching and try and steal bits and pieces off his game. 
Yes. Yeah, so, so I've never really like modeled my game of anyone like uh, so, some people tend to do. I think I just sort of play to my own strengths and then, you know, get comparisons to other people after that, I think. But I do, I do really enjoy watching Jamie Elliott for Collingwood. Um, you know, he's a bit of a bit smaller than me, but sort of plays a similar position and, um, you know, likes to high fly for marks and kick goals and um, can go on ball. So I think we've got some similarities. And I think also Connor Rosie um, is one that, um, also plays a bit, bit similar to me. So I think I do enjoy watching those two, but I don't think I really modelled it or, you know, anyone off that. I just I just play similar to them, I think. He's what a hell of a player, Jamie Elliott, as well. I've got to yeah. say, as a Carlton fan, he's uh, one of them players that I do not enjoy seeing on the team sheet. But <laughs> when he's not playing us, I do enjoy watching him. Yeah, he got you got you twice this year with, you know, game winning. I don't know. Did he get you twice or once with goals in the, at the end of the game? Well, I mean, the wonderful thing about Carlton as well is anyone who's a smaller forward enjoys yeah. playing Carlton. <laughs> Any small forward enjoys uh, playing us. But he, he's one of them players. Him and Taylor Adams are two players that just seem to see Carlton and play 10 times better than they have done the week before. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. Now, going into the future, I've got a magic wand. We're 15 years. We're doing this interview 15 years' time. You've been a one-club player. You've retired. Yeah. How would you like the fan base to describe you as a player for them? I'd like I'd like them to describe me as sort of a team player. I don't want to be known as a selfish player. Um, yeah, I want to know, be known for doing the team things, and um, but then also having the ability to also showcase my own ability. And um, I guess I want I guess someone that changes the game, so like has like impacts and um, can change the tide of the game like that. And um, yeah, someone that wins the game for the team, I reckon. Gets the team over the line. And the final football-related question. You're the list manager. Where are you taking Ollie Hotton? What pick? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, look, if, if I was, you know, Derek Hine, I'd take, I'd take me at picks uh, 18 to Collingwood after they get two. Because uh, they get Will and Jasper Fletcher will move it back to pick 18. So, look, I'd, I wouldn't mind that one. But I think realistically... Uh, yeah, I think any anywhere from that sort of sixteen to you know twenty five range. So I think anywhere in there, I'll be more than happy. I'm not really, I don't really, I'm not fussed where I go, just as long as I'm on an AFL list. They were all hoping to see you come to the Blues. I've got to say, you're a, you're a name that's hotly um, talked about in the Blues fraternity. But moving away from football, some fun questions to end with. Yeah, celebrities on the wall on posters as a kid. Who did you have? Ooh, um, oh geez, I didn't really had. So I just had footy players. Like I don't have have many celebrities. Um, no, I just I've just been like loving Chris Judd always. Um, yeah, no, Chris Judd and Ben Cousins are the two. Even though right. Ben might not have good, a very good, anymore. We'll but. count them as celebrities. We are in Australia, so AFL yeah. footballers are A listers over here. So now J- Juddy and Cousins, two phenomenal footballers. Yeah, they're my celebrity, so, um, yeah. Mate, I love it. And most bizarre food you've ever eaten? What's the weirdest thing you've tried? I reckon it'd have to be a duck foot, and it was not not good. i uh, never going to eat one of them again. But um, I had duck foot and uh, octopus yeah, in the same night. I think those two take the cake. <laughs> That's, that's yeah. was that was that a bet or was that just a, a weird holiday gone wrong? No, uh, we just had a, some Chinese restaurant and then someone just I don't know just ordered them at the end of the day. So I was like, oh, might as well give them give them a crack. And the octopus was better than the duck feet. Uh, I've got to say, feet just in all avenues is something yeah. that I avoid. Yeah, no, it wasn't it wasn't something I do again. <laughs> And what would you say is the theme song to your life? If you had to pick one, what what theme song would you uh, go with? Um, that's a good question. Uh, the Collingwood theme song. Can I speak that? You, you can do. Not because of the words of it, just because I go for Collingwood and play footy. So, <laughs> Mate, I love it. What's well, the best gift with Christmas coming up? Best Christmas present you've ever received? Uh, brand new surfboard. I uh, got, a, got a pretty nice surfboard for Christmas, so um, I haven't been able to use it as much this year because too busy with footy and um, that. But I went, I went last week, and I'm going again this weekend. So um, that's the best. I love, I love surfing. So I was good. I was happy to get that one. 
Mate, I can see you with Charlie Kerno hitting the waves down at Torquay. Yeah, maybe. There you go. I can see it. Now, have you got a guilty pleasure you watch on TV? Something that not many people know you for? Is there something that you like to binge watch? Um, I watch heaps of basketball on YouTube, but I don't think I watch anything strange, to be honest. I like to watch, you know, that, um, what's his name? Neil deGrasse Tyson guy that talks about, like, space and all that? Yeah. I actually love watching those things. I don't know why. But, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So I just love to see what he talks about. Um, I think that's one of, yeah, probably watch him a bit. I, I've got to say, you're a man after my own heart. I love that stuff. There is actually a really cool English YouTuber who has featured him on there called Simon Dan. And um, right. he debunks a lot of scientific myths, like flat earth and stuff, and does okay. it in kind of a humorous way. So it's worth worth a watch if uh, you're I'm on that. Yeah. And finally, fictional character. Who do you relate to most? If you were a fictional character, who do you think you are? Jeez. Um, I don't. Oh, that's a bit of a tough one. I can't really think of one at the moment. Um, look, I don't know. Uh, that's a that stumped me. That one. I actually can't think of one. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, no, I can't think of one right now. My bad. It's all good, Ollie. Well, I mean, obviously, we're only uh, just a week away now. That's scary. This time next week. You'll be uh, hopefully on an AFL list in day one. So on behalf of everyone at Pominoz and uh, the wider AFL world, we wish you the best of luck, mate. You seem a terrific young man, and uh, we're all rooting for you. Even though you're a Collingwood fan, we are rooting for you. No, thank you very much. Sorry about that last question, but no, thank you very much for having me, and I enjoyed it. It's all good, mate. Thank you very much, and uh, make sure everyone check out Ollie and uh, give him a lot of support. We can't wait to see him tear up round one.